Here are 10 plumbing mistakes you want to avoid at all costs. Starting with number one is not mixing your flux or soldering paste before applying it. Some fluxes are composed of a few chemicals and if not used for a while, they'll separate from each other just like water and oil. If it's applied this way, it won't do its job properly and your joint will most likely leak. So always mix your flux thoroughly to make sure this doesn't happen. Number two is using electronic solder instead of plumbing solder. Now, there's a few reasons why this is not recommended. Although, if you tried soldering with it, it would most likely work. The reasons you don't want to use electronic solder on plumbing is for these reasons right here. Rosin core flux is not nearly as aggressive as plumbing flux, so capillary action wouldn't be as good and might cause a leak. The other reason being is that most electronic solder have lead in them, which is prohibited on potable lines. And lastly, the fact that it's weaker than plumbing solder. The joint wouldn't be as strong, which could cause leaks in the future. So just use the proper solder to be safe. Number three is a mistake I see a lot when a beginner solders, and that's to heat the solder and not the actual pipe. To solder a joint properly, the fitting must be heated for a phenomenon called capillary action to take place. Capillary action, when soldering copper pipes, is what ensures that the joint is entirely filled. Think of it like a dry paper towel. As soon as it's dipped in water, the water goes towards the dry area. So, to make sure you're getting proper capillary action, heat the fitting and not the solder. And you'll see it get drawn in just like this. Number 4 is unscrewing a threaded pipe from a fitting and not retaining it. When dealing with threaded pipes, you always need to hold back whatever you're unscrewing or screwing onto. If you were to unscrew a pipe from a coupling without holding it back for example, you'd run the chance of breaking the seal from another fitting down the line. So always carry two wrenches with you when doing threaded piping to ensure it doesn't happen. Number 5 is not priming PVC or CPVC before cementing them together. Contrary to popular belief, priming is not cleaning. Priming a fitting and pipe actually creates the chemical reaction needed that allows them to properly bond together. Furthermore, cementing or gluing should be done within 5 minutes of its application as per Odie's instructions to ensure a proper bond. I do suggest contacting your municipality and informing yourself, as there are some specialty glues that don't require any primer. Also, Never use primer when working with ABS fittings as it will compromise the fitting and pipe. Number 6 is using some adjustable pliers on a chrome finish. This has to be one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm plumbing. The sound of tempered teeth grinding through a soft, mirrored finish fixture. As much as it may be an obvious thing not to do, we get to see it more often than we should. When installing a bathtub spout, for example, the best thing to do is to use a rubber strap wrench or heck, even your plier handles will do the job. A neat little trick when using pliers though, is to cut two scrap pieces off of a garden hose and use them on the jaws to protect the chrome from getting scratched. Number 7 is using Teflon on a supply line or speedway. I've seen this mostly on toilets where Teflon tape is applied to the toilet's valve as such. For those who don't know, the threads on a supply line are straight and don't actually seal like tapered threads do. Which is why there's a gasket inside as such. These could actually come out on some models so always make sure it's in it before installing or you might get a surprise. I've also seen some people add Teflon tape to compression fittings. Teflon tape is not necessary for these to seal, they're designed to be watertight without the aid of any dopes or tapes. Number 8 is applying glue to either the fitting or pipe, but not both. The glue or cement acts as a lubricant to ensure full penetration as simply inserting them dry all the way is pretty tough. On bigger fittings such as 3 inches and up, 
It's important to cover both the pipe and fitting hub thoroughly as to not get any dry spots. Here are two clips I shot of a clear setup. The top one only has glue in the fitting and the bottom one has glue on both. As they're inserted, you could clearly see that not applying it on both results in a dry spot. Something else that helps getting full coverage is to turn the pipe or fitting a quarter turn just to make sure it gets proper coverage. Number 9 is not making a reference mark when installing ProPress or SharkBite fittings. Whenever installing any fitting with a gasket such as a push fitting or ProPress fittings, it's super important to make a reference mark as such to know if the fitting is in all the way. A lot of installers will skip this step and get leaks once the pressure's back in because the fitting wasn't pushed in all the way. For ProPress fittings, insert the fitting fully and mark it before pressing it. And for SharkBite fittings, use a dedicated depth gauge or the depth chart from their website to get it done. And finally, installing an S-trap instead of a P-trap. All fixtures in a home have a trap. A P-trap, as seen here, is there to prevent sewage odors from coming into the house and the S-trap does no different. However, the S-trap has a major vulnerability, which is that it could easily be siphoned out. Normally, a toilet gets its air from the sink vent when it's flushed, but on an S-trap, the only air available is through the actual drain itself. So, as soon as the toilet would flush, it would siphon out the water and sewage gases would enter the home. To prevent this, never install an S-trap and always make sure to properly vent or install a mechanical vent like this. And that's it for this video. If you guys learned something, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, share it, and subscribe for more cool upcoming videos. And until the next one, thanks for watching.